welcome to the dollhouse i am the doll and today i want to share a story that i ran across on a sugar babies channel her name is melijah and she is a good example of how to decenter men while dating them um she shares a story that really contrasts what it's like to date in a decentered way versus what it's like to center a man in your life um it's kind of tragic so i'm gonna play a little bit from the video and um then we'll talk about it along the way and see i'm 28 i've been real i used to not date men that have baby mamas but i started realizing like a lot of the good men are taken so let me just you know not be so picky you feel me so i knew he had a baby mama and i wasn't really tripping because i'm not insecure like that I'm very confident in myself, and not even just that, like, you know, they're, they're separated. Obviously, he's not, you know, feeling her like that anymore, and I'm cool with that. That doesn't, like, affect me in any type of way. I know some women would be like, well, what if that happens to you? What if, you know, you just had a baby by somebody, and then that man takes an interest in you super quick, you know, six months after you, after you just had a baby and finds another woman? How would you feel? I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of women would ask me that question, but... I'm not in the situation, so I, I'm not going to put myself in her sh in, in that in that. I'm not going to. I could feel empathy for you, but I, I'm not going to put myself in your shoes because I would I would never be in your shoes because I'm not going to be a baby mama. I'm going to be a wife and a mother, so I would never be in your situation to begin with. But if I was in your situation, of course I would, like that would probably really suck. There was no issues with me and his baby mama obviously because it was kind of more on a dl type of situation like i knew he had just had a kid and you know i was respecting their situation i wasn't trying to be disrespectful or anything and then one day he invites me to la and i've never been to la before so of course you know girl i was like yeah i'll go with you why not you feel me so it's a normal day we pack we get up we get ready to go to the airport we get to the airport right and everything is really cool everything's real smooth there's no you know it's like we're not thinking like somebody's gonna run down on us so we're at jsx we're checking in and then i need to go to the restroom so girl i go to the restroom minding my business and then i come back child when i tell you there's a lady in line standing behind my guy holding a child i'm not thinking anything of it you feel me i did not know that that was his baby mama standing behind him so i casually walk up and stand right next to him because i'm not not knowing who this person is behind us and then i you know kind of turn around a little bit but i have my versace shades on my versace gold shades and you can't, you can't see, like, you, they're reflective, so you can't see where I'm looking. And, girl, so I turn around and I look, just looking around, and I realize the baby. And I recognize the baby, and, I, and just like a little glimpse, and I was like, wait, that's the baby that's always on his screensaver, on his phone. And then I looked at her, and, and you know, I kind of was like, uh, he showed me his baby mama before, but obviously she was a lot more skinnier. She just had a baby, you know, whatever. Um. Mm. I see his baby mama before. He's showing me a picture. Because I asked. Because I wanted to know what type of girls he likes. What type, what's his type? And um, his baby mama is a black woman. And so it all pieced together in my head real fast. You know what I mean? I was like, and then I and I turned around and I was like, all two and two all came together. I I whispered in his ear. I was like, Do you see who's standing behind us? He was like, Yeah, just don't pay attention to it. <laughs> like I don't know. Oh, I don't even know what he said. Honestly, I can't even remember what he said. But it was basically like along the lines of that, like you know, just kind of like ignore it. Like and me, I, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, girl. I didn't care. I did not care. Like, I, was, I wasn't going to let her mess up my vibe and then not go on the plane with him. Just imagine how silly you would feel if you had just 
spit out somebody's baby and you check his email because he's not calling or texting you back, not coming home, not taking care of the baby, and you find out that he's booked two high-end tickets to L.A. with a girl named Elijah. Imagine showing up to the airport with your newborn baby, looking crazy, probably bland in the face, hair in a bun, and you see your man, so-called man, in line with the bad bitch. <laughs> That's got to be terrible. I mean, really, that is the life of a pick me. That's the life of centering a man, having his child and giving him access to your womb before he's deserved it. And not even just that. Like, look at you. You look crazy. You are up here at this airport with a baby trying to cause drama. And not even just that. She had the nerve to approach me and ask me, do you know who I am? I didn't say anything. Obviously, because first of all, sweetheart, don't talk to me while you have a baby in your hand. Like, come on now. Seriously? Am I supposed to feel bad? Because I don't. You feel me? Obviously, there's something going on and y'all are not, you know, seeing eye to eye anymore. And that's not my, that's not my business. All, all I know is this man treats me good, sexually satisfies me. You know, he doing what he's supposed to do. Like, we get along great. Like, the energy is amazing. Like... And I can't even judge her because the doll has been in a similar situation. I almost forgot about this. <laughs> and the memory just came back. I remember being in college, dating my college boyfriend who had just had a baby with a girl at a college down the street. They were from the same hometown. Um, I was a freshman. They were sophomores. We both went to HBCUs. I went, I live in a town where there's a cluster of HBCUs and it's not Atlanta, praise God. But, um, anyway, the baby's name was so close to mine that I know it just tortured her to think about our relationship and him saying my name. Anyhow, one day he picked me up from the beauty shop and she swooped in the parking lot baby in the back seat, ran over to the car and punches him through the open window, just punches him twice. And I had empathy for her, but like Melijah said, I wasn't about to stop seeing him just because their situation wasn't working out. Obviously it wasn't working. And I was getting the attention that I needed if I was smarter, I would have been getting some money. I probably wouldn't been deal have been dealing with him because he didn't even have money to offer me. But, you know, he was a good time. So, anyway, I'll let her keep talking. That's y'all situation. Obviously, it, doesn't work. it didn't work out. It happens all the time. And the baby was obviously brand new, like fresh out the vagina, girl. Like, the baby, like, was literally fresh. Like, had to have been, like, six months old. The baby was brand new, okay? Like, been in this world for a couple months and he was gorgeous the baby was gorgeous obviously it was a mixed baby white and black he was light light bright super super cute kid another addition to the ambiguous family um we've got a super cute kid whose mom has been betrayed by her man um i wanted to pipe in here and just make note that the dad is white so White dads aren't necessarily the flex that they used to be. <laughs> it, it just is something to consider. You know, a lot of women want to date men of a different race, and it doesn't necessarily guarantee that he still won't be a pookie. And so as we're checking in, you know, he's just ignoring her, of course, trying to get our reservations reinstated. She had access to his email address, girl, and seen our flight reservations, his name with my name. So she called the airlines and um, canceled the flight. So when we got there, the flight was canceled. 
So we were already like, you know, what's going on? What's going on? And then, you know, obviously I go to the restroom. I come back. She's there. So obviously now it's all making sense as to why the reservation got canceled. She canceled it. And so the the service, the customer service people are just looking at us like, I know they're probably in their head like, child, this is get up. This is get up. Like, what is going on? Jerry Springer. Come out, please. Where is Jerry Springer at? I'm like, dead. Like, it was a Jerry Springer series, literally. They're looking at us crazy. Finally, they realized what was going on as far as the baby mama drama, and she canceled the reservation. So he, the guy at the front, easily reinstated our reservation. That way we can get on our flight. I mean, it personally didn't bother me at all. I was just kind of annoyed, in a sense, because... Men, for instance, men don't like to deal with women who have baggage as far as crazy men go. You feel me? So most men don't like to go sleep at a woman's house and things like that because they don't know what type of stalkerish men she has under her belt. Same thing. It goes for women. It's annoying when you're dealing with somebody and they don't have their baggage or their shit in check. You feel me? I have been in so many situations where people pop up. Like, I'll be with my homeboys and their baby mamas or bitches pop up on us thinking that we're dealing with each other. When in reality, this is just my homeboy. Never had any sexual dealing with, with him. And, you know, this girl popping up. You feel me? Like, I've had that happen to me so many times. Y'all, men lie. And it's not worth the emotional risk to get involved with someone who's showing you red flags and who doesn't want to commit it's not a good idea to overinvest because that's what leaves you feeling like you deserve some love back. And he, if he's not giving to it to you, you want to show up and pop up and demand it. Obviously, that usually never works. I mean, if he's alone, it might result in you getting laid, but it won't result in you getting love. So just understand that men will go where the fun is and they love to impress pretty women. They love to enjoy themselves. So if you find yourself not having fun with a man, then the relationship should end. If you feel that he can't give you what you need, whether that is money or stability or um, if you want fidelity, um, if you're not getting that, then cut it off. There's just too many other things to center in your life besides the attention of a man. So eventually she breaks up with this guy. She dumps him. And I believe it's because the baby mama just never ended. She never stopped. And, you know, obviously this girl, she she has a plethora of options. So it's interesting just to hear her discuss what made her cut him off and and I'll play a little bit from that video I want to put the video links in the description box because it's really interesting just to take a peek into the date uh, in, into the day in a life of a sugar baby number Let me silence all unknown callers. I just changed my number because um, that guy was dating a white boy. His baby mama started calling me again. Honestly, I feel really sad for her. I feel really sorry for her, like inside, like for real. Like, you wake up every morning obsessed with another female because your baby daddy cheated on you. If y'all were even together, I don't even know. I don't even care. Do y'all want to see how many times she called my phone? Well, I'm going to insert screenshots. Like, girl, you were up at 5 a.m. blowing another woman up just to talk shit on the phone. And it's like, okay, okay, cool, bye. Like, you feel all these things about me? Why are you blowing me up? I don't even have to explain myself. You're lame. You know you're lame. Do you not feel inside that you're being lame? No, she probably doesn't feel inside that she's being lame. And I have been a pick me before. I understand what it's like to have such a strong emotional attachment to a man and to the outcome of relationships that it makes you crazy for the most part. 
Like, not only is he probably manipulating her, but she's under the influence of oxytocin, which is creating a, a an, an attachment to him, and other hormones that are pumping through her body because she just gave birth. So just imagine what it's like when you have PMS, you know, and that times 10 because of so many different influences. So, you know, men, they're just very different. You choose to do what you want to do with the men you date, but I would encourage you not to give more of yourself than you are receiving on the front end. And having a baby for a man that's not showing real effort to commit, um, it's a bad idea. Like, girl, your baby daddy left you, move on. Trust me, I know, and I don't even want him. Girl, I could move on. I'm not stuck to no lame ass nigga about with the baby. Well, he's not lame. I'm not gonna say he's lame because he's not, because I dealt with him. And the only reason why I put him out was because it was just getting too much. Like, it was too much, too much drama going on. So I, I let him go. More receipts. I gave you your baby daddy back. Like, girl. If I was like you and would put up with his stuff, he would be here right now in my crib, probably still laying in my bed, sleep till 3 8 p.m. Because he'd be up all night getting that money. But, you know, I gave him back to you. Be happy. You should be grateful. You should be thankful. Like, okay, thank you, girl. Thank you, big sis. Thank you for giving me my baby daddy back. But he's yours again. Now leave me alone. Blowing me up to talk shit. Girl, I don't give, I don't care about you. There's a lot of things I could say about you, but I don't care to. You know, I don't care to, I don't care what your baby daddy told me, told you about me. You know, he told me about you. We could go back and forth all day. Whatever a man says about another woman should be examined before you take it as fact. Because a lot of times there is a motive for why he's delivering the news. Men lie and they pillow talk and they gossip just as much as women, if not more so. They understand how to manipulate. And I'm not speaking on all men, but I'm speaking on men who are not feeling committed to you or feeling committed to women like these. Women who are centered in their relationship. Because this man centers himself completely. Not his baby mama, not his child. He's doing what he wants to do and what feels good to him. So women, you should be doing the same thing. And if the man you're with doesn't share the same vision for what you want from life, what is the point? And it's like, girl, your baby daddy just gave me some money before I moved. Like, that's your baby daddy. That's just my sugar daddy. So what are we, what are, what, what are we talking about here? That's your baby daddy. Take him. He's just my sugar daddy. So which side would you rather be on? The side of money or the side of love? Quote unquote love. Romantic love. Romantic love is a joke. And lots of times women get holding the bag. Holding the baby in the airport looking crazy. It's just not a good idea to put yourself out there and put yourself at risk without getting the things that you need to feel supported and protected on the front end. You can't protect yourself from everything because married men leave women that they just had a baby with all of the time. But you can try to do more to safeguard yourself and set yourself up for a greater likelihood of success. That's all that I'm telling the dolls to do. And I hope you enjoy this cautionary tale. Go check out Melija on YouTube. Again, I'll put the links to the, to the stories, to the vlogs where these stories came from in the description box. And I look forward to talking to you soon, dolls.